Oh yeah, what's up everybody, welcome, welcome to another epic episode of Two Tall Toby's Bass Guitar Giveaway Modeling Free Training. We're going to model this bass guitar and then we are going to, then we are going to give it away. We're going to give it, we're going to reassemble it and then we're going to give it away. I'm not going to ship it to you in pieces. Question came in from the chat from Satrapt. Satrapt. And the question was, can we do a broken out section of a section view? And the answer to this question is, I don't think so in 2015. Um, you can see here that I've got my section view here and then uh, it says broken out section, but then as soon as I click on the sketch that's part of that view, the broken out section option uh, disappears. Um, I could also try and double click on this view to lock the view focus and click broken out section and see if I can get any traction here. Uh, but it says broken out section may not be created on a detail section or alternate position. Now, if you go to uh, help.solidworks.com, uh, which I've got up here in the web browser, 
Uh, there is a section where you can both search the help and search uh, for what's new information. I feel like this was added. I feel like I remember this being added. So you might want to scrape the what's new um, and see if you can't figure out if that was added or maybe even somebody knows in the chat. Um, so you may want to scrape the, the what's new. You could also go in here and you could search, but I always feel like this search is a little bit, um, a little bit tough uh, to decipher. In fact, when I'm working on my local machine, I actually turn off the web help and I just search the local help because it's a lot faster. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But, uh, you know, you may want to scrape this and see. So, so the way that you read through this uh, is you try to look for the top level topic. Like here it says broken out section. And then a lot of times this will tell you if there are limitations to the tool. Uh, so this is the you know this is the top level section here broken out section and then there's subtopics here so you can kind of read through this and see if um, you can find if it explicitly says that uh, it won't let you do things on certain things like yeah see here's the here's the uh, enhancement that I remember seeing broken out section on detail view so remember when I did this in 2015 it said you can't do it on a detail view where here here in the in the help for 2023 it's saying you can. And then look here in the help for 2023, it's saying you can do broken out section on a section view. Uh, so I think this was added in one of the releases since 2015. Uh, I love 2015. So, you know, that's why I'm rocking 2015. There are maybe a handful of things that were added uh, between 2015 and 2023 that I wish I had access to. But uh, it definitely, uh, you know, has has huge benefits as far as speed and snappiness, and that's why I use it. See, I'm trying on 2021, but it doesn't seem to work, sadly. Interesting. Well, you've piqued my interest here. So I'm going to go back up to the top of this page here and swap this to 2021. Look at the broken out section tool. It says in 2021 you can do it too. Broken out section on detail view, broken out section on section view. So unless their help is not correct uh which is certainly possible uh it looks like you can do it so here's how you do it right here help.solidworks.com and this is for solidworks 2021 and here is the url josh campbell says 2015 is solid 2021 lets you do broken out section on a section view for me and saturupt here's the help link to it josh campbell just tried it for you control the spine etc it just doesn't cut yeah well, if you're not, if it's not throwing that error that you were seeing on my screen, then you're definitely on the right track. Yes, you are very welcome. I like that heart after the thank you. Josh Campbell, what's up? Welcome. Thank you for trying it. Jed Hightower in the chat today. What's up? Robert is here as well. What's up, Robert? How you doing? Thanks for joining us. Tambor Station. I think Tambor Station has perfect attendance for this series. Uh, and I think there's probably a couple other people in here too. Robert, I know you've been in just about every one. I'm sure there's some people in here who haven't said anything in the chat, but have been in every single session. So thank you guys so much for the continued support. I very much appreciate it. Yesterday, I, I listened to the playback a little bit of the live stream, and I feel like I was getting a little too close to the mic, getting way up in here. So today, I'm going to try it. They say you should always have one fist between you and the microphone if you're doing it right. So I'm going to try today to do it right. Uh, and if I get uh, too close to the microphone, you guys tell me, okay? Tell, say, hey, listen, Toby, you're overdriving the microphone. You're, uh, you know, you're, you're getting a little too too uh too close there i'm trying to be a little bit more conscious of what i'm doing uh with the audio on this channel you know another thing that i've been looking into lately is the uh uh idea of vocal fry which is where you talk a little lower you talk in this register and uh i try not to do it but my voice does tend to go there plus i stream and talk for a long time until i run out of hydration and i drink coffee uh, looks like I'm reusing the mug from yesterday. Hopefully this isn't the same coffee from yesterday. Have, Merry Christmas to the best sister-in-law ever. Well, actually, I think this was from two days ago. So hopefully this has been uh, washed or I washed it uh, since then. Uh, but uh, I do try to be a little conscious. I want you guys to have a, a you know a beautiful sounding voice coming into your ears as you're watching this. So I'll try to stay out of that vocal fry registry. You have vocal fry, which is very low vocal fry. Then you have your normal voice, and then you have falsetto, falsetto, which is a different singing voice, which is a little higher. And those are kind of the different ranges that you can get into vocally. And so I'm going to try and stay in my normal voice, which is this voice here and uh, hopefully not dip too deep into vocal fry, which I sometimes do at the end of my sentences. 
Found somebody having the same issue. Wow. Are they surfaces? If it's surface models, you could be uh, running into an issue where you're able to section it, but maybe like running into a weird thing. I'll take a look at it a little bit later, uh, Satur up, because we got a lot to cover today. You know, and, and I think that an important part of what we're covering today is talking about vocal fry, so I'm glad that we got that out of the way. Guys, welcome, welcome. We're going to talk today about this potentiometer, and we're going to talk about uh, how the, we were able to use photos in this potentiometer to create a model in SolidWorks. So like I mentioned a moment ago, we're running SolidWorks 2015 here, my favorite build of SolidWorks. Uh, we are going to be taking a look at some of the files that we uh, worked on already, but we're going to be taking a look at some new stuff too. So let's get into it here. We'll start out with the uh, output jack. And you can see here that we, uh, wor we worked on this one yesterday. I think this one came out pretty darn good. Uh, we talked a lot about using photos when we were creating this one, dropping in the photos and using those photos to get ourselves a, a pretty realistic view of the model. Something in the chat that came in in the chat here, I'm just going to scroll back and look at it, uh, was from Josh Campbell. I just learned about the auto trace added. Pretty cool stuff. Yes, I agree with you 100%, Josh. The auto trace add-in is very cool. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of the auto trace add-in, I will attempt to do a little demonstration here. Um, it will probably not be that successful because of the contrast on this model uh, missing, but you can certainly clean that up in the, uh, in the images. But the idea of auto trace is that when I am in this sketch of the photo, and this is an add-in, you have to go into your uh, add-ins to turn on the add-in here for auto trace. So you guys can see this add-in here, auto trace. So we go in, we turn on that add-in, and then we can go to the image properties. So to get to the image properties, you edit the sketch and then you double click on the image. And what we will find is that there is an additional little arrow up here. This was not there before I turned on the add-in. So there's an additional little arrow here. So we can click on that arrow and then we can go to the auto trace functionality. And what the auto trace functionality lets us do is select a portion of the, uh, of the image and trace it. Uh, let's see here. I don't know why the image disappeared. I wonder if it's possibly because I have the transparency on. Let's see if I get any better luck here. Okay, it sure is. Interesting. Uh, so we can go here and we can select all or part of the image and then we can say begin trace. And what auto trace attempts to do is uh, determine the contrast and then use that contrast to trace over the image. So it's trying to give me sketch geometry where the image is. Now, this obviously isn't working here. And the reason why it's not working is because SOLIDWORKS isn't able to determine the difference between um, image and not image because I didn't crop the image at all. So this will work best if you use like a PNG where you crop the background or if you use like a black and white image. But I have been able to get it to work and it works pretty good. It's just, um, you know, it, it's just a, a different tool that you can use. It really works best when you have super high contrast images uh, on uh, a logo with a black and a white would work terrific. Uh, a cropped image where you've removed the background would work terrific. This image where I've got the green background and, and the green is actually a little textury because I'm so far zoomed in, it's not going to work so good. Uh, but that is auto trace. It basically lets you, you know, instead of me going in here from the side and manually tracing over this geometry to get that shape for the uh, pole, I could uh, I could let SolidWorks do it for me and just use what's called auto trace. And that's something that Josh mentioned in the chat. A great comment, Josh. Josh at the bottom here says logos work great. Yeah. Is there an option like photo to shape from 3D XP on SolidWorks? Photo to shape, yeah. Amazing function. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly lots of tools out there where you can take photos uh, and uh, and move them into solids. In this case, what we're doing is a little bit more of a measure and trace, a little bit of a low budget, low-fi uh, solution here to this uh, common challenge of taking existing parts and creating geometry around them, whether it's for 3D printing or rendering or you know whatever the reason. In the case of this model, you know what what we're really doing here is just we're just creating a really cool data set. We're using this for free training to teach people how to do uh, some cool stuff in SolidWorks. So we're really you know we're really. Uh, not super concerned about the accuracy, but uh, in the case of this bass guitar back here, uh, you can see that 
One of the things that I added when I modded this bass guitar was a thumb rest. So there's the thumb rest there. Um, and, you know, it's, as I'm sure you could probably infer from the name, it's a place to rest your thumb when you're playing. Okay, so you can see how my thumb is. And, and depending on where your thumb is, you'll get a different tone. If I'm up there versus being way down here at the at the bottom underneath the pickup, you'll get a very different tone. So it's cool that it is uh, curved like that. You know, kind of curved up and over. A lot of times people just rest their thumb right on top of that pickup, uh, and that's that's totally fine too. But the fact that this is curved means that I get some tactile feedback, and I know right where I am on the. Uh, on the bass guitar and the way that I got that that shape in there was I took a picture of the bass guitar and then used that picture to lay out this geometry. Um, there's a company there's a company that makes a similar product they make uh, they make thumb rests but they, they're that company is called Zero Mod and what they do is they make their thumb rests so that, that you can uh, screw them right into the same holes as the pick guard. Well, you know, if you wanted to do something like that, you could, but what you would need to do is know exactly where the holes for the pick guard are. Now, certainly you could measure that or you could scan that, but if you don't have that technology in-house, you could just take a picture of the bass guitar and measure the center to center distance on a couple of those holes and then lay the picture in and, and scale the picture like what we're doing here. And boom, you've got yourself a very similar solution. You could 3D print a modification to your guitar without actually needing to drill any additional holes, which of course is going to decrease the value, the resell value of the guitar potentially. Um, in the case of this guitar back here, I think I bought that used for $60, so I wasn't very concerned about uh, decreasing the value of it. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I increased the value of it, uh, but I will never sell that guitar because that guitar, uh, it's like, it's like love. It's like I'm completely married to that guitar. There's some uh, there's some kind of vibration in that guitar that resonates through me and vice versa and uh, it's just like it's magic whenever I pick that thing up I just start writing songs uh, and there's there's just no stopping me so it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing but the point that I'm making here is that when you are working with photos, uh, sometimes you're trying to create something super accurate. A lot of times you're just trying to create something that you can retrofit to, and that means that you've got a tolerance of, let's say, plus or minus 10 thousandths of an inch, or maybe plus or minus a half a millimeter or so. And so when you have that amount of tolerance, you can really get away with a lot using photos, and you can certainly land within that tolerance uh, just using photos. We got Leonard Tyndall in the chat. What is up, Leonard? Great to see you in here. Guys, if you haven't seen it, Leonard co-hosted with me on one of the Two Tall Toby speed modeling tournaments. He's been a guest on Model Monday Live, and he delivers tips from the train, Leonard's tips from the train, which are another great source of uh, SolidWorks knowledge to speed up your productivity. So check out Leonard's channel or check him out on LinkedIn. He's got a lot of great, great content there. He's really a huge asset to the SOLIDWORKS community uh, and uh, and very helpful and always willing to answer questions. So check out his stuff. And let's talk a little bit about what we've done since yesterday. So like I said, we did the uh, in instrument jack. Uh, we also, after, uh, after hours last night, I created this. I did record myself creating it uh, so we can create a little time-lapse video and show you guys how we did this one. This is the potentiometer that controls volume. So the uh, instrument jack, uh, sorry, the pickup, uh, which is the magnetic coil that sits on top of the bass guitar and hears the sound, has a line that goes down and goes into this potentiometer, which uh, controls resistance of the signal. So when you turn it one way, you, you completely open it up and there's, there's no resistance. When you turn it the other way, you're increasing the resistance, uh, which translates to a volume knob. When you turn that up and down, you increase and decrease the volume. So uh, that is here kind of in the middle of our uh, the middle of our harness. I'll hold this here above the keyboard so you can see that one. So it's kind of in the middle of our harness. It's it's kind of interesting. The one pot, this pot down here, or, the, or sorry, the pole. This pole here is just soldered directly to the base as kind of like a, a, a grounding thing. Um, and then this one goes out to the tone controller, uh, which is which is here. This goes out to the tone controller. And this, oh, sorry, sorry, this one goes out to the tone controller. And this one goes out to the actual output jack. So that's what's going on with that uh, three pole system there. Ali Amore is here. What's up, Ali? Welcome, welcome. 
And uh, and this one goes out to the tone switcher. So the three-way switch uh, here is for the tone. They both get grounded through the back of that potentiometer, and then they end up here on the instrument jack. Uh, the reason I'm explaining that to you is because we are going to need to do some work here on these 3D models. We're basically going to do what I call like stubbing them out. We're going to create little stubs that we can use to create the routes for these wires. So it's just important for you to know that, you know, for example, the three-way switch has a negative pole and a positive pole, and there's a wire coming off of each of those, so we'll create some stubs for that. Uh, the potentiometer has the obvious uh, poles here, uh, here and here, which you can see here there are wires going to. Uh, but there's also a section on the potentiometer on the back where wires are coming off of. So we're going to have to create a little stub there as well in order for these wires to come off. There's actually a third and a fourth wire that go into that. The, uh, the wire from the bridge and the wire from the pickup also connect here to this uh, potentiometer. So we need, to, we need to make sure that we get that, that wiring in place. And the pickup has two... Uh, has two wires coming off that are positive and negative. So one of them goes into the back here and one of them goes onto one of these same poles. I forget which one the pickup comes in from. I think it comes into the middle one. I gotta look at my pictures to remind me. I'm just thinking about where those pictures are right now. I think they're on my phone. Uh, always good to take pictures of your wire harness before you dismantle it. And then when we get over here to the instrument jack, it's just got two poles and we'll have to just stub out those two poles as well. Talk about that momentarily. Uh, as we get ready to run the wiring for this thing. It's a single point ground. Cool. Thank you, Robert. Um, which one are you talking about? You're talking about the uh, the rear of the potentiometer. That's the single point ground. Everything's grounding to that. The bridge is grounding that for sure. And one of the... Um, uh, one of the two wires inside the pickup is grounding to that as well. So is that what you're saying? The, the rear of this is the single point ground? All right. So what that means is um, back on the back of this thing, we're going to create either a glob or we'll just create a stub there. But I just want you guys to know why we're putting a stub there. And we'll put a stub here and we'll put a stub here. And, uh, and then we've also got the three-way switch that we did after hours. Uh, this one's not quite as detailed as the other one, believe it or not. It looks very detailed when we look at it here. Uh, it's not quite as detailed as the other ones, uh, but I think it's certainly fair to say that there's enough going on here for us to work from uh, and to avoid ground loop buzz. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Single point ground, the black lines all meet at one place to avoid ground loop buzz. Yes, thank you. Uh, I am not a Sparky at all, uh, so this is all very much like paint by numbers for me. I'm not uh, an electric electrical engineer, so I appreciate any feedback, and please don't hesitate. Uh, I will not uh, I will not accuse you of being a know-it-all or anything like that, because I am a know-nothing in this space, and uh, I'm absolutely a sponge and ready to learn. So please, please, if I use any incorrect te terminology or anything, correct me, and uh, I will try to adopt and, and use that terminology, and this is very helpful because um, as I'm sure you or it sounds like you know Robert this is uh this is like real noob stuff as far as electrical engineering goes just having these three or four components um, I've got other bases that have you know full active electronics and multiple pickups and when I get in there I am very dangerous and I have uh, put myself in spots where I'm like I'm just tearing this whole harness out and I'm just putting in a passive pickup system because I'm confused or I fried something or I don't want to deal with the battery or whatever so uh, please, please continue to share. Uh, this is very helpful both for me and I'm sure for a lot of the people in the chat. Awesome. Awesome. Analog electrical engineer old timer. Awesome. Robert, I'm very glad to have you in the chat. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is great. This is what we need. All right, cool. So what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, put these components together. We're going to model a few additional components um, so that we can put these together. So, for example, when it comes to the... Uh, the um, out instrument jack here, the output jack, you can see that I added in just a couple of little components, a, a nut and a washer in that section. Um, and then I positioned that in the instrument cover. So we've got that. Uh, again, you wanna remember guys, when you're in an assembly, if you press tab, you will hide your components. If you hold shift and press tab, you will bring those components back. And you wanna remember that you can do that uh, in a swipe, meaning I could hold tab and move my mouse over these components and one at a time hide them. 
and I can hold shift tab and move my mouse over these components and one at a time bring them back. So a real good way to tunnel through an assembly, you could just kind of hold tab and start moving through your assembly and hiding things until you get to what you need. And then you could do shift tab and move through your assembly and bring some things back. A little bit more tricky with the shift tab because you have to hold your mouse over the area where the component is hidden. So that can be a little bit of a tricky move, but a little bit of practice you can get there. There we go, we're all back. Whoop, need more practice. Okay, so how are we going to position these things and what additional components do we need? Well, there's kind of a cool trick that we could use here to position these components, and that is to utilize surfaces and offset those surfaces to help us align our geometry for the, uh, the um, align our geometry for the wire harness uh, process. So what I mean by that is we could, you know, in theory, we could take a bunch of these surfaces from the bass guitar and offset them and then use that just to help us with positioning the electrical components and basically end up with an electrical component um, sub assembly. So that certainly is an option um, that we can use in this spot. I mean, there's going to be a lot of different ways to address these challenges. I guess the main challenge I'm trying to avoid is having to constantly show and hide the bass guitar body in order to see the uh, the internals. And again, this might become a little bit more uh, significant if we are working with a more complicated electrical harness, but I think there's still value to be learned from learning how to do this. So I'm gonna go into the body sub-assembly here. And then once I get into the body sub-assembly, I'm gonna go to the command uh, insert component new part and my electrical stuff is going in here to this uh, kind of uh, 800 and 900 area so I'm gonna call this one RBG-800 dash dash, and I'm just gonna call this one 000 dash surfaces for uh, electrical layout and then I'll click the front plane of the assembly because that's always where we put our components when we do insert component new when we're using the master model technique. And uh, then I'm going to immediately exit that sketch that I entered into and I'm going to go to the command uh, insert surface offset. And this is going to be an offset of zero. And the surfaces I'm going to offset are going to be any of the surfaces that are related to the electrical layout of this thing. So basically all these surfaces here uh, that are you know, part of the electronics enclosure, I'm just gonna offset these. And what the, the, the purpose of this is just to make it a little easier for me to kind of see what's going on with the electrical uh, pocket, the electronics pocket here, I don't need that one, and um, start positioning my components for the electrical layout without having to constantly rotate around and, and avoid the you know, the overall um, bass guitar, you know, uh, body, we'll say. So in other words, I can hit the green check mark here. Uh, that gives me an offset of those surfaces in this new part. This is what the new part looks like. And then on this new part, I could maybe even do a little more cleanup, uh, like select face, begin a sketch, orient the view. And um, here I'll just use a spline. And I'm just gonna kind of go around here. this and then I'm going to do a surfaces trim command and just get rid of this section of that surface now we will assign a color to that to make it a little bit easier to see you know recognize when we're working in that region and let's return to our assembly and now we can hide the bass guitar and we still have what we need to run the electronics in this thing a lot easier to navigate uh, when you have performed a task like this. Much, much easier for us to see where the components need to go and to start running those components together. Um, I did run into one issue here when I did this, uh, which is that this surface here is the surface of the paint, uh, and this surface here is the surface of the actual guitar. This is something that I knew was going to end up uh, kind of biting me, having that paint on there. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've come this far. We're going to leave it. Uh, what I mean by biting me is that this is like technically down in the paint uh, as is this but uh, Like I said, we've come this far. We're not gonna we're not gonna go back now uh, I'll fix it sometime some one of these days between the streets. Maybe this weekend. I'll go through and I'll fix it uh, And I'll tell you guys what I did 
So now we can use the R key. Uh, I haven't talked about the R key too much during this stream. And the reason why is because uh, I work on other projects on this machine, uh, particularly stuff for Model Monday Live, like this model here is from Model Monday Live. And I don't want to give away the uh, secrets of what I'm working on uh, for Model Monday Live. But uh, in this case, we've already shown this one. I don't have anything else locked into the queue here. And you can't remove these files in 2015. This is something else I wish that 2015 had that the newer builds have. Uh, but uh, you can't remove the files, so you just have to kind of uh, deal with it. Uh, so we've got the three-way switch here. We've got the potentiometer. Now, what I did there was I pressed the R key to open that file. Another thing that's good to know that you can do when it comes to uh, working in SolidWorks is you can take a part file, click on an edge, and in this case, the edge exists at the intersection of a planar face and a cylindrical face. So I can pick on this edge here. I can press the S key. And once I press the S key, I can choose the option for reference geometry, mate reference. So a mate reference is a way of pre-cooking this part so that it's ready to be dropped into an assembly. And in this case, this edge is at the intersection of a, a planar face and a cylindrical face. So that is very significant because what that means is I can just simply hit the green check mark. Um, in other words, I'm accepting the default criteria for the mate reference on that edge. And then I can close that part and then here in the assembly, I can press the R key and I can drag and drop this part into this assembly. And when I drag and drop this part into this assembly and I hold my mouse over an edge that is at the intersection of a plane and a cylinder, SolidWorks adds two mates for me automatically. So it's a pretty sweet way to save some time when you're uh, creating your assemblies because now what's happened is I've automatically uh, given myself here two mates. Two mates have been created uh, and those mates are the mates of uh, concentric and coincident. So I just automatically gave myself those two mates there. No problem. I uh, was able just to kind of drop those in and drop in that three-way switch. Pretty cool, right? So that's just called a mate reference. I'll do that again here for this one. So you can see here, this is a face in the assembly. This is a face in the, in the assembly. There's an edge here. That edge is at the intersection of a cylinder and a plane. Here's my potentiometer. And I've got this edge here, which is at the intersection of a cylinder and a plane. Well, if I pick that edge and then I go to the command insert reference geometry. So pick that edge, insert reference geometry, mate reference, or if I just press the S key, uh, this is built right into the S key, no customization there. Uh, mate ref uh, reference geometry, mate reference, and then I just hit the green check mark to accept the default, which in this case is saying if I drag this part into an assembly, automatically try to get this edge and mate it to something. And what I mean is I'm going to close this part and I'm going to press the R key. So it's not like I'm dragging this part from that edge. I'm just grabbing this part from Windows Explorer, essentially, moving that into my assembly. And when I move it over an edge in the assembly, which shares a cylinder and a plane, at the intersection of that edge intersects and I drop it, SolidWorks automatically adds two mates to this part. It adds the mate for concentric and coincident. So if you never heard that before, if you never heard about that trick before, the mate reference trick, put a one in the chat. If you knew about that, the mate reference trick, put a two in the chat. Curious how many people know about that one because I think that is such a monster trick. Um, and when you use that in combination with the R key, Man, you can save so much time because if you have a bunch of instances of something and you need to drop it over and over and over and over again, well, you know, you can just drop it in there by pressing the R key, drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop, and you're good to go. Okay, cool. Awesome. This is what I like to see. I'm glad to hear that we are sharing tips that people were not aware of. Let's make this part. We're going to speed run this part. This is the cover for the three-way switch. Uh, so that you can change it from. You know, I have to. I'm gonna have to lead on uh, Robert for this one. Robert, here we go. Pop quiz for Robert. Uh, I think that what this is doing is it's switching the uh, the pickup from being a single coil, a dual coil, and a blend. I'm curious if you know. So this is what the cover is. Single coil, maybe like single coil, dual coil, blend. That's what I'm thinking. It's a three-way switch. If you have any thoughts on that, please let me know. Uh, and while you are thinking about that and everyone is anticipating your answer, I'm going to create this part. 
Uh, this is simply a new standalone part with a diameter of 1.33 and 0.51. So we'll go here, top plane, begin a sketch, orient the view, and 1.33 and 0.51 S key extrude. Dual quest, three wires coming from it. Okay, this one only has two. So it must be something else. 0 0.0635 for the height of that thing. We're gonna make this out of a plastic. So we'll just call this ABS. We'll go high gloss. Uh, we'll make this a high gloss black here. And then we are going to go top plane, begin a sketch, orient the view. And we're going to go tools. Single left, single right, then dual humbucker. Yes, that sounds correct. Thank you, Josh. Awesome, awesome. I got a feeling we're going to be making a lot of guitars together. Uh, tool sketch, tool sketch picture. And we're going to take this image of the three-way plate and drop this in here. The, just so you guys know, this ena enable scale tool, you guys know I always turn it off, enable scale tool. The way this tool works is if you know what the diameter of the thing is that you're, or what the, if you know a distance on the thing that you're doing. So I know this is like 1.31. What you can do is you can take this little magenta dot here and drop it in reference point one, and then take this arrow and drop it in reference point two. And then when you let go of it, you can see here that you can do the uh, dimension. So as soon as you, you, you drag the one dot on this side, you drag the arrow on this side, you let go of it, you type in the dimension from the reference that you took. And then SolidWorks resizes the image to match, you know, that reference that you took. So that's how that, that scale thing is works. That's how it works. It works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I just don't like it because I do a lot of grabbing the corner and resizing it. And when that's checked on, you can't grab the corner and resize it. It's not that I don't like it. I just disable it because then I'm able to, you know, grab the corner and resize it. So there's nothing wrong with that tool. It's just, I, I just don't use it because I usually I create a layout and then I size the image to the layout to try to compensate for any kind of deformation when I took the picture. So image top view. And then here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create an additional uh, boss extrude to represent this kind of silver paint. We could certainly do that with a, um, we could certainly do that with some kind of a decal. Uh, that would probably be a, a valid way of accomplishing this, but uh, I'm going to do it using sketch geometry and extruding. And the reason I'm doing that is because then I don't have to worry about anything if I decide to, you know, kick off a rendering or anything. Um, I can be confident that I'm going to get the desired results from the rendering. I'm not going to like be dependent on packing a, a decal file with the rendering or anything like that. So that's the idea of what I'm doing here. Maybe use split line to do this. You could definitely use split line to do it too. Yep. Um, same concern with split line if it goes out, you know, somewhere where uh, it, it, it all just depends on what you're doing downstream. Really, uh, the the most surefire way to uh, get the results that you want would be to make this part as an assembly to make like every single uh, component that you what did I do there to make every single component that you uh, that you need to have as a different color you know make that as a different component in an assembly what is wrong with my typing here Uh, because that way you wouldn't have to worry about uh, you wouldn't have to worry about any kind of a translator issue. It would just work. Uh, so you know, it just depends on what you're doing. Like if you're going out to, to virtual reality or something, uh, you might you know if you're going into Blender, you might want to make all your parts different components, or maybe different bodies, or maybe you know just make them different colors on their surfaces. You got a lot of. Uh, uh, a lot of options to determine what you're going to do in that scenario. What was this one? This one was 0 0.2. And this one's 0 0.03. Wow, this is going to be a real pain, huh? 
I think maybe I don't like the way I'm doing this. I think I'm gonna just do this as a thin feature. never fun when you like start doing something and then you're like I really don't like the way I'm doing this <laughs> never a good feeling oh crud did I just like reconvert that I did huh I'm gonna have a double line here huh? this will be double this will be double a little quick delete don't tell anybody what happened doesn't help that that image is black, huh? Okay. And then we'll make this for construction. And then that should give us something that we can extrude with 30,000. Mm. Yeah, I totally... Uh, Totally failed on this one, guys. Sorry. Here we go. Round two. Round two. We're going to make this a little bit more robust. I know what you guys are thinking. This is the guy who's teaching us speed modeling? <laughs> All right, here we go. And then that's... I'm just going to bring that up. 0 0.010. And, you know, like you said, it, it could certainly be done as a uh as a split line split line would definitely be an option there uh i got no problems with using split line uh, i think it would work just fine I'm gonna kind of wake up that line so i can use it as a parallel reference here and do the same thing here look at this line use it as a parallel reference here there we go and then we're going to take Another sketch on that surface, and this one will be that inner you know, rectangle shape. I don't really know my shape's that good. Rectangle? That's called a rectangle, right? <laughs> Alrighty, and extrude, and for this one I'm just going to double click on that other ridge that I created so that it goes up the surface so it'll it'll match that same height. Uh, let's see if we look at this again. So, and don't merge the results. Okay, and that gives us our inner rectangle there. And then we could go repeat, repeat, repeat. So it's gonna be this one. This one, and I'll take this as well. Convert, and then I'll just get rid of this, and this, and this, and extrude. And that's gonna go up to surface so I'll just double click on this face here so it goes up the surface and don't merge the result and then I can take those bodies I'm gonna do something a little bit weird here I'm gonna just make this body white so I can see what I'm working on and we're gonna mirror them so we'll take right plane features mirror this and this and this and then we'll take this body oh here we go coffee's kicking in guys don't worry this is gonna get better <laughs> all right then we'll take this here and this and right mouse button combine and we will take this plane and use the command insert cut with surface and use it to cut this body. We're going to cut it in the other direction. And then we are going to 
be done. <laughs> That's it. So let's see here. Show that image again. Yep, that's what we wanted. She's got the colors backwards. Okay, so we will say that uh, the entire model is, let's see, right mouse button, appearance, remove all part appearances. Take the entire model, make it out of like a chromium plate here, and then we'll take that high gloss plastic and apply it here on this body. And we'll hide the image and we'll save this. Maybe we'll put a small fillet around this top edge here. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> so nervous. All right. And then we'll call this one 804. Cover plate four, three way switch. And we will check this into our project. And then we will. Uh, pick this edge here, S key, reference geometry, mate reference, save. So we just did that default. We'll close this, and then we can recognize that we've got... See, this is where I'm going to get a little bit... Uh, I'm going to get a little bit messed up by the, um, you know, uh, the, the, the paint being there. So let me just hide this surface body and then let me show the bass guitar body and so then i can r key and grab that model and look see how it just snaps right into place it's like magic okay because my cursor is getting close to an edge which has a cylinder and a planar face so as soon as my cursor gets close to that i'm able just to drop in that uh instrument or that three-way switch cover plate it can still rotate Right, so we got to decide what we're going to do about that. Um, but, you know, that'll just be like a mate for parallel. All these components can still rotate, so I got to lock them all down at some point. So that is a pretty cool bit of functionality that I think is worth uh, remembering. Uh, it is definitely something that can save you a lot of time. Let's create that knurled nut. You know, maybe I'll just save this knurled nut for after hours because I think that the big thing I wanted to show you guys today was the um, wiring. So I think I'm going to save that actually for... You guys don't want to watch me model another part. This knurled, knurled nut here. I'll do that after. Yep, let's do the wiring. So now that we've got these components in place, let's make sure that they are uh, in the correct uh, orientation and that they are... Um, they are uh, not going to. Let me see here. Yeah, that one looks good. That's going to go. Wow, this goes this way and then doubles back to the instrument. That doesn't look right. Is that right? I guess it is. It's weird, like how this. Uh, it's like it's wired like this. And then there's enough room somehow to get to the instrument jack. It doesn't seem like there's enough room for that. Hold on, let me just look at the, the body real quick. So this one goes in here. This one goes here. Yeah, I guess there is. How about that? <laughs> it worked before I took it apart, and it still works now. That's amazing. Josh says, knurling usually locks up my system. Yeah. You know, when I was younger, I did a video on a uh, video series on knurling. If you ever want to go into the uh, the Wayback Machine, you can look up uh, SolidWorks Neural Knurling. Or you can just look up SolidWorks Neural Toby. That'll probably get you the hit. Yeah, here it is. Look at this video series. Look how young I was. My goodness. Oh, we got an ad. Oh, we got another ad. Look at this one. 13,000 views. That's not bad. Look at this guy. Pretty good technique. I like it. Thanks. All right. Cool. Thanks. Skip. 
Yeah, so I was trying to show how to do neurals on a uh, non-analytic uh, surface. That was the point of uh, this video series was to teach you how to do, like if you had a grip for a handle or something, um, you could do neurals on there and uh, end up with something like this. A little bit of a, a little bit more of a advanced neuraling tutorial than just doing it on a cylinder, which I think is what I show in part one. I think I showed how to do it just on a cylinder. Look at that, young Toby. Let's go, I got the maker bot still. I still got that machine. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so just a little, I just wanted to take a quick stroll down memory lane there, guys. I hope I didn't get too close to the mic when I was talking about that. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's take a look here. Let's save. As always, we want to save. Whoops, I think I got the, the audio from that was going still. What we need to do now is we need to uh, stub this out so that we can create some routed uh, sweep paths for this thing. So what I mean by that is we go into the command uh, 3D sketch. And then we choose the command line. We create a line like this. We take this line, hold control, pick this cylinder, make it concentric. Take this end point of the line, hold control, pick this face, make it on plane. Take this end point of the line, hold control, pick this face, make it on plane. Then we exit that sketch and then we rename that to, if you want to make your life a little bit easier, you can rename it to represent which pole it is. So this would be um, like, this would be called uh, pole red wire. And you could also even change the sketch color if you wanted to, to make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, and then this one here, same thing. So uh, 3D sketch, line. You just gotta try and get it close to begin with. I think you can actually pick up on concentric here. Yeah, look, you can pick up on concentric in one move. Can I pick up on concentric here in one move? Oh yeah, look at that. Look how much time we just saved. Uh, sort of, let's see here, on plane, okay. So, and then you're gonna exit that sketch and you can call this one pole black wire. And then again, you can change the sketch color. Probably don't want to change it to black because uh, it might not really pop that much, but maybe like a magenta or a, even like a, a blue. Okay, and save. What is that one? Let's get this guy open here. Repeat, repeat, repeat. So 3D sketch, you could technically you could do it in one single 3D sketch. I like to break them up just to make it a little easier for me to see what I'm, what I'm working on. Look at that. I like that. For from there to there. It's not fully defined though for some reason. <laughs> okay, so that one is the red. So this one will be called pole red wire. This model of the three-way switch, I kind of. Um, I just sped through it. I didn't really go as crazy as I do for some of the other ones. So we'll go 3D sketch and we'll create a line here. Wake up the center point. Go from that center point to this center point. Oh yeah, look at that one. First try. Pull. Black wire. Right mouse button, sketch color. Change that to blue. I know that's underneath my keyboard view, but you can see it change in there. Save, close, and this guy here. Now remember, this guy has uh, a few different, few different uh, stubs. We got the two stubs here, and then we also have here. So uh, this one will just be a little bit more complicated. So go from here to here. Now SolidWorks offers a program called SolidWorks Routing. Um, and that's a program that I have taught many times. Uh, I am a, I guess you could say I'm a routing guru. I think it's fair to say that. I, I know how it works, uh, which is more than most people can say. Uh, and the reason why uh, it's such a difficult, I'll say add-in to comprehend, a big reason why is because of the training manuals. Uh, and this is, a little bit of commentary on uh, training manual auditing, but it's not its not really a knock on the people who make the training manuals because I understand the plight. But there's one section in the training manuals where there's one lesson uh, in routing. Make music volume down. Okay, thanks, Raju. 
bump that down a little bit for you. There's one lesson in the uh, in the training class on uh, on routing where they they kind of try to combine three different concepts together at once. And one of those concepts is the idea of using a from to list. And when you do a from to list, what you do is you utilize an Excel spreadsheet and the training manual provides you with that Excel spreadsheet. Well, when you teach classes in SolidWorks, you often teach year after year after year after year. And uh, the computers don't always necessarily get reformatted at the same time. And so the result is that these Excel spreadsheets that they included in the training manual were sometimes referencing directories that no longer existed. Uh, and that then caused the student's exercise to fail. But the problem was that it wasn't uniform across the entire class. You would say, all right, everybody hit the green check mark. And like four students would raise their hand and say, hey, it didn't work on this computer. And then everybody else, it worked fine. And so there were these inconsistencies that were, would occur when you were uh, teaching routing that would often turn people off to uh, the way routing works. Really, there's an underlying uh, commonality amongst uh, people who learned it in training class and people who learned it on their own. And that commonality is that you really need to be aware of what you're doing with your libraries when you're working in routing your library creation library management uh, it needs to be spot on and if you're not spot on with that library creation library management then you just end up with a lot of frustrations when you're working with routing so i like it i i like it i know how to, to how to run it i know how to make it sing um and it does work really good but if you're not on point with your um library management then you're going to find it to be pretty frustrating so that's you know that's just kind of a little bit of background on routing uh it's you know like i said it works fine what did we call this before single single point of ground black lines all meeting it's a single point ground okay now for single point ground so i got i know you guys can't see me renaming here uh but if you're in the chat and you've had some experience with routing, please feel free to share your experience. Um, you know, it's like I said, it's it works great. It's just if you don't have your library set up, then it works like like garbage. So you just need to you set up your libraries, you know, which is fine. I think that's fine. You know, it's a fine uh, stipulation to have something work correctly problem is that it's just it can be really confusing it's really difficult to learn on your own if you don't kind of know the ins and outs of what's going on with library access when you're working in routing it's also really hard to set up for multiple users again if you don't know uh kind of the ins and outs of what's going on with routing all right that was perfect amount of time for me to create these stubs for the single point ground Hopefully I created enough. I think there might be four that come in there, but honestly, I'm going to end up just sketching in a blob of solder afterwards anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Sketch color. Make this for our black poles. Okay. And save. Close that. And then we're going to take this guy and add a stub to him. Uh, let's see here. So here's another good trick in SolidWorks. Uh, when you are looking at a model in the assembly, you can right mouse button on the model and you can say open part in position, open part in position. And that will open up that part file in the same orientation that it's in in the assembly. And that's helpful because now I know, you know, what I want to do is I want to run a line off of this corner of the pickup. So now I know where that corner is in the assembly, you know, because the part's symmetric in both directions. So very helpful to be able to then uh, get in here and create a line coming off of you know this corner of the pickup and it's kind of like an arbitrary location where that pickup is you know so I'll just draw a line here and just say uh, pickup location and then I'll make a 3d sketch coming off of that and that can just go here in the negative direction and that is going to be my 
uh, pole for this is really uh, this is really two wires, uh, but I'll just call it pole for wire. I'll split this one at the bottom. This is a, a wire in a wire. Uh, sorry, two wires uh, inside of the one single wire. Coaxial is that what you would call it? Or what do we call it in routing? You have like multiple cores in a. I forget what it was called. Double wire cable. <laughs> yeah, it's very. I'm sure that's what the official term is. Robert's probably pulling his hair out right now. Like, what is wrong with this guy? Um. There's also coming off of the bottom of the bridge, there's a wire. There's not really a pole here for the wire. Uh, so I think that one we can just kind of drop in here using uh, this surface here as a location. Really, if anything, it should be uh, on the surface or even on the, the base body itself. Uh, so, you know, for this one, there's like a wire that just kind of comes up and then uh, droops out right here. Uh, and the uh, it literally sits right in between the bridge and the paint and it sits right here like this so i'm just gonna create a sketch like that that's that's almost exactly what it looks like uh and so then i'll call this one uh pull for black wire and right mouse button sketch color and we'll make that one blue okay so we just stubbed everything out that's what we need to do if we're going to be doing some routing without wires and we are now ready to do routing without wires and run the electrical for this whole system so uh, let's start with a really simple one here. Uh, we're gonna just go from one pole to another pole. Uh, that is going to be from the red on the three-way switch here. Uh, I'll hold this in my keyboard camera so you can see it. The red on my three-way switch going to the red on the potentiometer. Very simple, very straightforward. Uh, one thing we want to do before we move forward is we wanna make sure that our electrical components are not floating. So let's take this uh, front plane here and make it parallel to the front plane of our, or sorry, the right plane of our assembly. No, we do want it to be to the front plane, okay. So let's make those parallel so that the little uh, minus sign goes away in the tree here on the three-way switch. Here's the three-way switch, no longer have a minus sign. Still have a minus sign for the potentiometer. So let's get that locked into place as well. That looks pretty good for the red going to the red. And this one is actually probably oriented this way, more so. Here's another little trick. Oh, okay, guys, everybody hold on a second. This is a big deal. We're gonna use the mouse cam. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I know I've got the mouse cam down here and I don't use it that often, but we're gonna use it here. So you'll notice here um, that we can left mouse button and drag, uh, but sometimes when we left mouse button and drag, we don't get the exactly the results that we want. Well, we can also right mouse button and drag. Now, a lot of people know about this, but just in case you don't know about it, uh, left mouse button and drag is move in SolidWorks. So here I'm holding control and just making a copy of this. So left mouse button and drag lets you move components. Right mouse button and drag lets you rotate components. And when you, so left mouse button and drag move. Oops, left, ma left mouse button and drag move. Right mouse button and drag rotate. And uh, when something is mated into place so some of the degrees of freedom are missing uh sometimes left mouse button and drag doesn't get you what you want but right mouse button and drag does so just a little pro tip there uh, in this case it looks like it's actually the opposite right mouse button and drag is not getting us what we want so i'm gonna left mouse button and drag but uh it is good to know that that is how it works okay so now that i've got that into place i'm going to mate this plane front plane to the front plane of the assembly parallel nope Here's the mates for that guy. Let's edit that. Let's try perpendicular. Okay. Let's uh let's try parallel again. <laughs> let's try an angle. Okay. No, that's the distance. Let's try an angle. There we go. Easy. First try. Now we're gonna run a red wire between these two. And so to accomplish that, we can simply uh, insert component, new part. And now at this point, you're going to have to decide if you want your um, electrical harness to all be one single component or if you want it to be multiple components. I'm going to just do it all as one single component, uh, but we could certainly do it as multiple components as well. So I'll call this 811, all electrical wires 
I'm just going to do it all in one uh, single part, but, uh, you know, you could do it as multiple. I don't know. Maybe I should do it as multiple, right? I almost feel like I should just do it. I almost feel like I'm doing this wrong. Like I should do the whole assembly. Uh, everything that's like related to the electrical should probably be in an electrical harness assembly. So there's a lot of, you know, you got a lot of choices you got to make here. Um, maybe I should make the wires, though, at least an assembly. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, we're backtracking here, guys. So we're going to go insert component new assembly. And we're going to call this um, RBG 8000. Okay. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do at all. Did I make it? Yeah, I did make it. Great. Okay, try again. File, insert, component, new part, new assembly. RBG 8000, and we'll call this um, wire, wires for electrical. Okay, I like that. Wires for electrical. Oh, it thinks that it's open in the cache still. Okay. I was just trying to rename that part so I didn't have an extra file in my uh, memory. Wires for electrical. Rename it from the tree as it's already open. It's all yeah, I, I deleted it out of the assembly, but it's still open in like the, the cache basically. RBG 8000 wires for electrical. Okay, save. So now this is going to uh, go on to, it's not asking me for um, a location for this. So I'm just going to take the origin of this and made it to the origin of the assembly, which it probably already is, but just to get it kind of locked into place. So there's the wires for electrical. And uh, then I'm going to insert a new component or even like a series of components into this. It's probably the best way to do it is just to insert a series of components. Um, I wonder if I, I'm, I don't think I've ever done this actually. If I edit this assembly and then I do insert component new part, will it add that new part to this assembly? It should, right? Uh, so we'll call this one RBG 811 uh, positive, or I'll just call it red. Red wire, uh, three way, two, pot. I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay, red wire to potentiometer, and then I will hit the front plane of this sub-assembly, and then I will immediately exit that sketch, immediately begin a new 3D sketch, and do a convert entities here. So convert this one, a convert entities here, to convert this one, and then a spline to connect the two. So this could be a multi-point spline, or it could even just be a two-point spline. So I could do something like this, just a two-point spline between those two endpoints of my line there. And then I can take that spline and manipulate the spline handle here. So I'm just grabbing the spline handle to manipulate it. And I can say that I want that spline to be uh, t uh, tangent to each of these lines. So that's tangent. So it comes up off of there. And tangent. So it comes off of here. And then we also have the option to do a spline length. Uh, as a, a driving dimension. Um, you also have the option to write mouse button here and say insert spline point, and that'll give you a little more control over this thing too. Right mouse button, insert spline point. Right mouse button, insert spline point. There we go. First try. And then if you want to, you can do things like dimensioning to those points. So I could create a dimension here that goes from the surface to the spline so that at that location, it's always at uh, point, you know, six, seven, five. Uh, this is something that you would do just to kind of hold that point in place to make it a little easier. Because now, see, now I can't drag it in three dimensions. I can only drag it in two dimensions. So that makes it a little easier for me to manipulate the spline without things completely blowing up on me. Now, in SolidWorks 2000 and either 16 or 17, they added the ability to create a sweep without needing a profile, but I am using the earlier version. Whoa, what the heck just happened there? That was weird. My mate? Wow, that was really, uh, I guess we'll say unexpected. My mate just like wigged out. 
I didn't like that meat anyway. Okay, I moved that around and then the, everything updated, which is what I wanted. Uh, that's definitely helpful, but uh, I also want this to not to not go crazy. Make those parallel. Okay. Okay, and uh, so we can edit this part, the uh, red wire here, and we can create a new plane. So S key, reference geometry, plane, and this will be normal to a curve at an endpoint. I know that I'm referencing that red line, but I'm already referencing it for the location, so I'm not too worried about it. Then we can put in the diameter of the wire, say 30 thou, and we can sweep that wire along that path. So we sweep the wire along the path, and then we can say that that wire has a color. So we go here to our colors, say it's like a red plastic, And that looks like a wire. We did it. We did one wire. Yeah. Epic. All right. So let's continue on here. Uh, let's see if we can make another wire uh, from this from this harness. So the next one is going to go from that middle pot down to the instrument jack. So rinse and repeat. We edit our sub assembly. We insert component new part. We call this one 80. Let's see here. But 811 electrical wire. Uh, this will be called 812. And this will be called red wire from uh, potentiometer to output jack. Output jack. And we immediately, uh, sorry, we pick the front plane of our assembly because we always pick the front plane of the assembly. We immediately exit that sketch. We go into a 3D sketch. We take this stub and convert it. We take this stub down here, the red, and we convert it. We create a spline that goes from here. Hopefully I got that end point to here. Uh, we use the spline manipulation handle to change the way that spline is, is routing. Use the spline manipulation handle here. Change the way that spline is routing. We take this point or this this curve and this curve, make them tangent. We take this curve and this curve, make them tangent. Now you got to help it out a little bit before you make it tangent. <laughs> take this and this, make them tangent. Wow. Ah, I see. This is one of these spots where you're going to want to right mouse button, insert spline point. And then you can click on the spline point, And if you right mouse button, you get this option here that says show sketcher triad. And that lets you move the spline point using this thing. So you can move it straight up in, uh, you know, the desired uh, orientation direction. That can be pretty helpful too. get this thing little bit more where we want it if it's not going you know quite where you want it to go that line really doesn't want to it doesn't want to swing up in this direction no matter what I do let's try it again okay there we go So we could take this, uh, you know, this second point that we created here, we could move that sketcher triad. Yep, sketcher triad, very helpful. Got to do our best to get this out of the way. We could do the same thing down here. We could right mouse button, insert spline point. One thing I've noticed about that insert spline point is that you have to, you can't get the no parking sign. So right now, the way that the cursor looks is it's got the little circle with the cross through it that means if i click on the line i'm not going to get the additional spline point so it has to has to not have that right mouse button uh hide sketcher triad right mouse button show sketcher triad now it shows up here then you can use that to 
You know, just got to get the wire out of the way. Okay, I think that looks close enough for what we're trying to do. Exit that sketch. And then we can S key, reference geometry, plane, pick a curve, pick an endpoint of a curve, select that face or that plane, begin to sketch. And that is going to be our 30 thou, whatever we're using for our wire. Exit sketch and features swept boss base. Sweep that boss along this path. Why is it giving me the... It's never easy. It's never easy. What do we got? I got a rogue entity somewhere. That looks good. That looks good. Did a right mouse button select chain there. That looks good. That looks good. It all looks good. That looks good. Sometimes it just likes to give you a hard time, right? I feel like that wire diameter is too small. I should have measured it first. Yeah, it's closer to 70. Uh, I'll make it 60. Wow. Yeah, that looks much better. <laughs> I don't know why when I changed the dimension. Oh, I know what it's doing. It's doing that auto scale bullcrap, you know? It's trying to auto that's what it's officially called the auto scale bull crap it's trying to auto scale my thing my model based on the dimension that i just input since i never officially input a dimension because i use auto dimensioning but it's like if i'm using auto dimensioning maybe you should just maybe you should just work right that's what people usually say that's what they would say to me in tech support it should just work edit the wires we'll do Let's see here. Those are the two red wires. Let's get into some of the black wires now. So we're going to go three-way switch to uh, the back of this potentiometer using a black wire. So insert component new part. And this will be called 813 black wire. Three-way to potentiometer. And we will pick the front plane of our assembly, our sub-assembly. We will immediately exit the sketch, go into a 3D sketch, and convert the black wire pot here and the black wire pot here, where everything is going to be soldered together, our common ground. It's nice to think about us all having a common ground, something that's often missing these days, right? So this time I'm going to draw an extra point here uh, just to just to give me an additional location. And then I'll take these two and make them tangent. It seems like I always have to go in and do the insert spline point anyway. So uh, maybe it makes sense to do it that way. Little spline manipulation there. No problem. Spoke too soon. <laughs> Why? There we go. No problem. Can you ever get the reverse tangent to work? Uh, let's try it. That's a good idea. Oh, ho, 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 yeah, Josh. Wow. Cool. Let's go. Man, I didn't know about that one. That's really cool. Damn, I don't even need this point anymore. Yeah, Josh. Everybody give a, a like in the chat for Josh. That's awesome.
He says, whoa, never works for me. Yeah, all right, well. You get, you get one for me, that's for sure. I'm going to open this part this time uh, just to make it a little more consistent with regards to the reference geometry plane coming off of a line from this 3D sketch. I Honestly, I don't like having the uh, plane defined by that stub that's in the other part. I like to have my parts as contained as possible. So this is going to be a sweep here. This one's going to be black. I'm going to hide that plane. I'll go through and clean up some of this plain visibility stuff a little bit later. Oh yeah, that's starting to look like an electrical harness. I like it. All right, now we have the that same uh, sort of uh, area where the three, uh, where these three poles are here, going to the um, output jack. So we'll right mouse button here. We will say edit assembly, insert component, new part. This is going to go here red wire red wire this is gonna be black wire and this will be 814 potentiometer to output jack yep it's good and then we will uh, pick the front plane of the assembly immediately exit the sketch go into a 3d sketch and we will take a convert entities here and a convert entities here And then make a spline. It goes from this one should pro this one should probably come. Oh, whatever. I'm not gonna. I was gonna say we should probably be a little bit aware of which direction this wire is going, so that we don't end up inadvertently uh, grounding to the instrument as it gets plugged in. But I'm not gonna worry about it. That's a little too a little too detailed for what we're trying to do here. Make that tangent. Tangency worked. Make this tangent. Tangency worked. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we are going to need probably a little bit of... Uh, maybe I can get this to come up through. Nah, I'm probably going to want to add an additional spline point here just to to guide this thing out. So, like, no parking, no parking, parking. Make sure you get that parking or else you're not going to get what you want myself a height there get that thing to just kind of cruise out like so let's open that up see what it looks like that looks pretty good reference geometry plane again if you're in a newer version of SolidWorks you will not have to make that plane and make that extra sketch you can just sweep using uh, automated profile. So hard to fully define every time, yeah. Very true. Gotta do it though, except for this time. Fully defined every time, except for this time. That's gonna be the next, the next song. The remix, exactly. Well, that certainly looks good. Aside from the fact that I'm gonna hit, hit that wire when I, you know, when you put in the <laughs> when you put in the instrument cable, you're gonna hit that wire every time, and you're gonna end up ripping the solder right out. But hey, nobody's perfect. Okay, so that's uh, our four wires that we've got on this thing. That's a pretty good start. Um, now, <clears throat> now we've got our additional wires coming down from the bridge and coming down from the pickup. So we will um, utilize the same functionality, the same workflow. So right mouse button, edit assembly, and we will go tools, no, sorry, insert component, new part. And this one will be called 815. I'll just call this one black wire ground from bridge to potentiometer save and this one is going to go on the front plane of the subassembly immediately exit sketch 
And this one is going to be a 3D sketch. And this time what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of uh, concentric line activity into this hole. So this 3D sketch has this line that I just created here. And it is concentric to that hole that's going up to the, the bridge where that ground wire ends up ultimately. Uh, this could be a convert entities here for that ground wire. And then there can be uh, a spline running between them. So we'll create a spline that goes from here to here. And we'll say this is tangent. And we'll say this is tangent. So that's that spline, you know, that, that kind of tucks underneath the bridge there. And then it just comes down through this hole, ends up here like this. And then we do our convert entity from this stub here on the, um, top of that potentiometer. And I'll just kind of route this through the instrument, uh, it, sorry, the electronics cavity here. And then this will be tangent. And this will be tangent. I like this song. This song gets me in the mood to route some wires tangent, if you know what I mean. How is it that the wires always end up running into one another, no matter what you do? So crazy. Well, a little bit better, I guess. <laughs> Can use the spline handle here to pull some of the tangency out. Okay, and we can exit that sketch, and then just like we've been doing, let's open up that part. I think that wire is just a little bit smaller diameter, uh, so I'm gonna, you know, make that one just a little, little smaller. S key reference geometry plane. Select that line. Select that endpoint. Select that endpoint. Begin a sketch on that plane. We'll make this one 0.045. Just a little bit smaller. Exit sketch, and then pick the profile, pick the path, features, sweep. Sweep that along the path, hide that plane. Save that and close it. Oh yeah, that's starting to look like some, some wiring to me. Okay, cool. So then the last one is going to be the wire coming from the uh, coming from the bridge. I think this one, I'm just going to stop it uh, a little prematurely and then uh, wire it the rest of the way uh, after splitting it up into two different different wires. So uh, for this one, we can see it's like it's weird because this one's because of how tucked in this one is to that hole. Like it, it really gets pinched by that hole. Um, at the bottom of that cavity but that's what it does i mean that's you can see it like that's exactly what it does it ends up like tucking up and around it looks like they even put some silicone here to not have it get pinched too much so you know we're on the right track we're doing the right thing here uh edit that sub assembly let's save real quick edit that sub assembly and then we will tools or what's it called Insert component, new part. And we're going to say this is going to be 816. Call it coaxial. Or, oh, you know what we call it? I remember we called it. We called it cable, multi core cable. I'll just call it coaxial. A wire and this one will be called will go from uh, pickup to potentiometer 816 boom okay and this one is slightly larger diameter as well you know, I'm kind of jumping the gun on this but about 0.125 so this one is going to go on the front plane of the assembly. Immediately exit sketch, jump into a 3D sketch, convert this stub here from the pickup and convert 
or actually we'll do the same thing we did last time. We'll create a line here and make this line concentric to that channel so that we can route right through that channel. And then we'll create a spline coming off the end of this. Those warnings were saying, you're not gonna be able to add this relationship, which is fine. We're not trying to. I'm not trying to get into a relationship, you know? That's like very close to what the actual thing looks like. So I'm, I'm happy with that. So we'll go here. Can I just pick this intersection point? Yeah, it's good. Tangent here, tangent. And then we will, there's a vocal fry. Take that guy there. And this one's not gonna, it's not really gonna come all the way to this stub, but I am gonna convert this stub and connect the two. And then I think what I'll do is I'll just trim it in, um, let me extend this a little bit. Too. I'll just trim it in the single part file and then I'll uh, re extend it when I get back into this assembly. Because what's going to happen here is that it's the, the entire cable isn't going to go to there. It's, it's going to split right about here. And then part of it's going to go to one of these poles here. And the other part's going to continue on to there. So um, it's getting a smaller diameter when that occurs. So let's see what this thing looks like when we open it up into its own window. And if, if the radius of curvature is too tight, I'm not going to be able to create the sweep that I want to create. So I'll have to adjust that as well. But we're going to hope that it just works on the first try because that's how we roll. It's looking pretty tight though, tell you what. <laughs> Sweep that profile along that path. Ooh, interesting. Doesn't like the path for some reason. Are these not connected? It's like chain. They look pretty connected. Profile, path, sweep. Looks fine. What are you doing, SolidWorks? Invalid topology right there. That's right where it's gonna end up. It's getting too snug there. So we'll edit this uh, sketch of the spline and just increase the curvature there. And this is supposed to be tangent. It's not solving as tangent, even though it says it is. Unless I'm missing something. Try it again. Add an extra point in there. It's always a little tricky to sketch in 3D. Okay, here we go, Josh. Hope you're ready for this. Oh yeah. Two for two. I like it. That's still, it's not gonna like that, that curvature there being so snug. Probably gonna just fudge this one a little bit, guys. Little, little fudge there. This is the song that gets you ready to do a little bit of a, little bit of a fudge. It's that wrinkling that's happening there. Oh yeah, there we go. First try. I don't know what's going on here. I noticed that the whole time we've been sweeping. Probably if I did like a minimized twist or something, I could avoid that. But that's what ends up happening inside of these instrument cavities. So I actually don't mind it that much. Yeah, like this in here. This is uh, <laughs> this is a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit dicey there. Um, I mean, the other thing I could do is maybe just change the direction of that pole and then basically have the sweep like come this way and then route in and through that would probably be a lot cleaner so maybe i'll do that after hours tonight uh but now at this point what i could do is i could go back to this and um trim this back a little bit because i have the sweep here so i have this reference point right here 
uh, oh, sorry, this reference point right here. So now what I could do is I could uh, maybe do something like another 3D sketch and make a, a 3D sketch just of a point here, like so. And then I could uh, S key reference geometry plane, take this line and that point, then use that plane that I created to do a cut with surface. So now you can see that I've cut away uh, that wire. And then I could do uh, select plane, begin a sketch, and just sketch a couple of circles here for those smaller diameter wires. So this will be uh, 0, 0. 0.0. Boy, one of these is really small. Four twenty zero point zero four twenty. We like that, and then zero point zero three zero. So we'll do that one. Uh, zero point zero three zero, and just kind of position those like so. And then we could um, actually, you know, we should lock those in a little bit more because of the fact that we're going to be sweeping from there, so we don't want it to be too too loosey goosey, as they say. better and then we could do um, sketch 3d sketch and we could create a line that starts here at this point and then comes off perpendicular to the surface uh, so here we go perpendicular to the surface like so uh, we could maybe even add in a driving dimension there and then we can take this line uh, which is already on the potentiometer convert it and then we could do a Oh, wait a second. Sorry. That's not the right. I still could have converted that. It's not the right. It's this one. It's the third. It's a smaller one that goes to the back of the pot. Wrong line there. Everything I said is still valid. I just, just did the wrong, uh, did the wrong line or the wrong location. Go. So we'll take that and we'll convert it and then uh, spline to connect these two, just like we've done in the past. So we take the spline and connect those two and then we make that tangent and we make that tangent. Exit sketch, select face, begin a sketch, take this circle and just convert it. Exit that one, take these two and sweep them together. And that, I could, you know, not merge results just to give myself make it a little bit easier for me to change the color of that one because that one actually is showing as like a uh, almost like a threaded cable uh, so I could do something like a, a brushed aluminum just on that body to have that show up a little bit shinier and then um, we're done with this and we can save and go back to the assembly so there we go. There's that wire splitting off there. And then the other one, um, well, I'm just going to guess which pole it goes to. I'm not exactly sure which pole it goes to. But uh, the other one, what's up, Arian? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Sorry, I didn't give you a proper shout out when you got here. But thank you for joining us. Glad you're hanging out today in the live. Uh, the other one, like I said, I can't remember where the other one goes. I got to look at my uh, look at my camera and see where that other one goes but i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly that it goes to the oh god i just ripped the solder off i mean i ripped the i just ripped the joint off the pot <laughs> i just ripped the rip the uh oh man i just ripped the cable ground braid from coax cable yep yeah that's that one that's the ground braid from the coax cable i just can't remember where the other one goes uh the uh the white cable that comes off the pickup. If it goes into this this guy here or this guy here. I'm just going to guess. I'll probably be wrong. I'll have to go back and look at my pictures. And now I've got another disaster on my hands because I just ripped out the middle <laughs> the, the middle hot wire from this. So uh, Not an actual disaster. Just a, just a little bit of solder. Nothing. A little bit of soldering won't help. Okay, so we'll do edit part here and we will go uh, sketch, 3D sketch. And we will take one of these leads. I don't know which one. I'm going to just pick one at random, and it'll probably be wrong. But that's 
OK, because we can always go back and edit. And we'll take this guy here, and we will make that perpendicular. And we will maybe give it a dimension. OK. Oh, I was trying. You got to remember when you're in 3D sketch to click in the background when you're adding a dimension. End of pot. Okay. So you think I got the right one or the wrong one? I guess we'll find out. Stay tuned for next episode to find out. Make that tangent. Make. Oops. Uh, let's see. Do I want this to go this way? Seems like an awful lot of bending, but we can do it. Make that tangent. Uh, exit that sketch. Take that larger diameter for the white cable. Convert that. And sweep using both of those. Whoops, exit sketch. Sweep using both of those. Doesn't like that bend, once again. Let's open this guy up. Make this a little easier. Yeah, I kind of had a feeling it wasn't going to like that. Edit sketch, right mouse button, insert spline point. Make sure that we don't have the no parking functionality. Let's see if that gives us any more luck. Okay. Whoops. Crud. Don't merge the results. Go up here to plastic, high gloss, white. Drag and drop that on there. I don't know the answer to that, Josh. That's a great question. So Josh said, is there a button you can press or hold so that when you accidentally pick a surface in the background, you don't end up trying to 3D sketch dimension to that? Let's try it here. So if I create a line like so, and then I go from here. Now, right now, if I pick this, it's going to try to just pick that surface behind or well, it made a liar out of me. I um, wonder if we can do like a shift or an alt or anything. Maybe alt. No, nah, no. Nah, look, it's still, it's still trying. Maybe a uh, control. Nah, it still wants to do it. Shift? No. Nope. Well, maybe shift. Shift is always the magic key in SolidWorks, right? But in the case of shift, it's like it's going to want to pick the arc. Yeah, that's, that's not going to give us what we want. Alt. Yeah. I don't know. What's up? Aman. Blue Byte Systems. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Great to see you in here. Aman does a lot of really cool stuff with... Uh, Visual Basic custom add-ins for SolidWorks. So if you guys have any, ever have a need to do something in SolidWorks and you want to get it automated, uh, hit up Blue Byte Systems. They will definitely take care of you and help you with automating any tasks you have. I know there's a lot of hardcore SolidWorks users in here today. So uh, maybe somebody's got an idea that they want to automate. Hit up Amon, hit up Blue Byte. They will definitely take care of you. Well, Gentlemen, I think that uh, is a very good day's work. I am extremely happy with that. Um, I love the way this is looking. This is looking to me like an electrical harness. We got everything that we need. We got the coax cable coming out of the pickup, going into the uh, single ground point on the back of the potentiometer. There would be a big old glob of solder here that everything is going into uh we got the second cable from that coax cable going into the potentiometer and then we have the line going to the tone control which in this case is a three-way switch uh, we have the other ground coming back to the single point of ground so those two pots are taking or those two poles are taken care of we have the line coming off of that potentiometer going to the instrument output jack and the single point ground coming from the instrument output jack we have the ground wire coming down from the bridge here from underneath the bridge going into that same single ground point I gotta say, I am pretty darn happy with this result. What do you guys think? Put a one in the chat if you are happy with this result. I think we had a real good day today of modeling. I am very happy with this result. This is pretty sweet. I'm going to show the body again. Um, I'm going to remind you guys that this 
this component that I made that is just the surfaces to make things a little bit easier for the routing, we can right mouse button on that component surfaces, right mouse button, go to component properties, and then we can hit this option here, exclude from bill of materials. That way that guy doesn't show up in your bill of materials whenever you make a drawing, because that would be lame, 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 lame. Design P-U-L-I is here. What's up? What's up? All right, and I'm gonna hide that surfaces. So I think that, you know, if we were gonna just do a quick review here, the, the big takeaway is that you wanna stub out this work. You wanna, you wanna go into your components and create very easy to see locations where your wire routes are gonna be coming from. Now, when you're using the SolidWorks routing add-in, this functionality is what's called a C point. Um, and then you also have what are called R points, which are like pass through points, but don't worry about those. This functionality is called a C point. And in, in the actual routing add in, uh, whether you're working with SOLIDWORKS or a different CAD system, you get a lot, a lot of valuable metadata from those C points. Those C points will tell you things like what is the diameter of the wire? Uh, where's the wire purchased? You can in incorporate, uh, you know, fixed wire lengths and, uh, a lot of information that you can use when you're creating your wiring schematic out of uh, a 3D model like this. Uh, there's also uh, an add-in called SOLIDWORKS Electrical, which takes it up even another notch. Uh, so a lot of the stuff that I'm doing today was kind of like brute force getting through it, but the underlying functionality is there. And if you don't have a wire routing package, you can still get a pretty good result. And you can you can do things like what is the length of this wire? You can take a measurement uh, to give yourself the, the path length or spline length uh, when you're looking at either a wire like this, where it's one single spline or a more complicated wire where you're passing through some straight sections. So for example, some Something like this if you wanted to capture the length of this wire so that you can order the correct length wire well you would go up to your smart dimension uh, functionality and you would use a path length dimension although it's not showing up uh, let's see the only thing we have is smart dimension we don't have path length when we're in that's interesting all right, well, that might be something that they added in a newer release. You can always do a right mouse button select chain and then down here it will tell you what the total length of uh, no, it's only telling me the one because we go into evaluate measure, right? Get the total length. Yeah, total length here. So you can always go in and do a measurement um, and get that total length. This is some functionality that you might be able to uh, leverage a little bit more if you were using an actual wiring package, but you can still get in here, get the wire length, make sure that it's the correct length. You know, maybe you would go into the metadata of this part and you would say, uh, you know, order a 10 inch wire because th this is measuring at seven inches. We want to give ourselves uh, three inches of slack. So we would say here something like wire length and then we we call this like 10 inch wire. Um, and then, of course, you could always look that up as well online and then you could say vendor and then, you know, get your wire vendor uh, order number or part number. Something like that. And then that way, when you do a bill of materials, you can make it really clear to the rest of the team what to order. So um, let's close out here. Let's take a look at this harness one last time. Very happy with how this is looking. A lot of times what I do is I do a view sketches. I turn off the sketches. I turn on the ambient occlusion and uh, perspective in this view. And then I take a screen capture of this. I post it on LinkedIn and I say, guys, look at what we did today. This is pretty cool. This would definitely qualify for that. I'm really happy with how these wires came out. Maybe I'll take a view from the back as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, this is great. This is definitely, uh, I'm happy. I think you guys are happy. The pot is missing the knob. It's true. We say lots of fun stuff in, in this uh, live stream, right? I ripped the joint right out of the pot. The pot is missing the knob. Yes, the knobby is right here. Uh, we're going to have to model that up. It's got some knurling on it. So we get to go back and watch that video from young Toby uh, with the knurling and how to do knurling. Uh, or we'll just add it as a texture. We might not actually model it up. I mean, we do have to be a little bit careful. Um, we talked about this yesterday in depth. You're, you're increasing the number of graphics triangles with every one of these little details. And nobody's going to see this, this crap anyway. So, you know, you, you, anytime you're going to be increasing the number of graphics triangles like this here, this is horrendous. If somebody sent me a model and it had this on it, I would like, uh, I would, you know, I would not be happy if, uh, you know, this was decreasing my overall performance in SolidWorks. This is a, a bass guitar. It's a very simple assembly, maybe, you know, 40, 50 parts max. If you have an assembly that has 10,000 parts and you're making your screws and adding a, a fillet like this, which is a curve on a curve, you're 
you're making life harder for you and for all your coworkers for basically no reason. So, you know, you have to understand the the uh, context in which you are working when you're making these decisions about whether or not to include this type of geometry and whether or not th- there's really justification for a simplified configuration. Fortunately, I have a pre-smoking computer uh, that I bought for SolidWorks, so I am good to go. If you ever need, if you ever are in the need for a smoking computer, be sure to check out SolidBox.com, MySolidBox.com, excuse me, www.MySolidBox.com. They can definitely help hook you up with an amazing computer that will uh, allow you to not have to worry too much about graphics triangles but you know all joking aside it always is something important to consider guys i am very happy with how things went today uh please feel free to share and reshare let people know what we're doing in here we will be back next week tuesday wednesday thursday 9 30 a.m we're going to continue working on this thing until we're done uh i think that we are you know we're definitely getting close we are closing in i'll make probably a few little subtle changes to this thing tonight to, to clean it up a little bit but uh, or over the weekend to clean it up a little bit and i'll of course let you guys know what those changes are but uh overall i'm very happy Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Robert, uh, VIP today. Uh, Thank you for all the advice on how this thing is supposed to be wired together. Um, I'm pretty close to putting this back together into the body, so I may be doing some soldering this weekend, uh, put it all back together in the actual physical body back there. And, uh, And we are basically getting ready to move on to the headstock and the tuners and the strings few more components here like you said the knobby the uh there's some that knurled nut that i'll create offline uh but guys thank you have a great rest of your night have a great weekend be sure to like and subscribe be sure to share the channel with other people and uh we'll get a bunch more people in here to enjoy this free training on how to build a solid workspace guitar i'll see you guys